Today, let's kick it right off. We're going to be talking about uh, bubbling. Uh, and if you don't know what bubbling is, it is this is the video for you. So stick around for it. Maybe extending off of my uh, Forms Masterclass series. Now, we are going to be doing it in Pine Grove because you know I love Pine Grove. But I hope the, the ideas and things like that will translate very simply onto Webflow. So if that is exciting and you're all uh, keen to do it, then smash the like button. Give it a good smashing and uh, we'll, we'll get on with it. A um, few small announcements actually before we kick off. First of all, I've got some very exciting news coming hopefully at the end of this week. And maybe this is gonna affect the channel, I'm not too sure, I've kind of been working really hard over the last couple of months on some uh, new products, some new ideas to help you guys uh, learn web development and get, kind of get better at being a, a an agency, actually more specifically, kind of teaching everything I do at Jupiter and the Giraffe and what we do um, there and trying to, and trying to make it available to, to everyone. So hopefully there's gonna be some cool, um, exciting things uh, at the end of this week, like I say, with with many more to follow over the course of the year. I've been working really hard on it hope it hope it lands well and like I say it, it may very well end up on the channel so that's quite cool the other thing is I bought one of these tasty mothers and I'm I'm trying to play around with it with regards to my business I have been playing games of course you know um, echo VR is my jam at the moment so but I'm keen to try and maybe see if I can I work this into the channel as well because I am I'm folk I am focused on how it can help you with your productivity and your business and coding and and I've got some assumptions at the moment which I'm kind of putting together in like a blog post or, or whatever but if you are excited to you know want to hear about what I'm getting up to with the with the Oculus it will always be named the Oculus uh, in my eyes uh, what I'm getting up to there, then then let me know because I'm keen, I'm excited by it. I'm excited by the whole web 3.0. Um, I'm thinking things like web VR API. I'm thinking things like business meetings or, or presentations and stuff like that. So again, just thought I'd mention that and see if you uh, um, were keen for it. Let me know. So let's jump into this. Like I say, we're going to be talking about bubbling and form events, building forms and, and having JavaScript power those forms. Because if you haven't seen my Webflow Forms Masterclass series, do check it out if you haven't. We, we go through various different phases of building up like a multi-stage form and various things. And I don't think I really delved into that. So like I say, we're gonna be, let me get my notes up as well. We're gonna be talking about bubbling. What the f is bubbling? Bubbling is kind of what it sounds like actually and it's this idea that events that are made on the DOM actually bubble up. You can listen for events at various different stages um, or, or very different various different hierarchies of the of the DOM. Click events are the easiest thing to kind of demonstrate here. So let's just do it with a click event. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bind a click event to to probably not this button because that's a submit button let's, we're going to bind it to this input but i'm not going to listen for that click on the on the input at all i'm going to listen to it on the body of the of the document so we can do it all in the browser here we'll play around with pine grow in, in a little bit but what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to go document dot body so i'm going to get the body and i'm going to add event listener and i'm going to add a click event to that and we're going to fire a function and we're just going to say console log click so what i'm doing here getting the body adding a click event to it and just console logging click right we'll add that there we go we've got some errors here what you can see now is that whenever i click somewhere it bubbles up to the to the to the document. How does that sound on bubbling? Like, does that make sense? What what's what's happening with, uh, with 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 events? How they're kind of rising up the DOM? How we can pick up on events on elements that that, that haven't even you know a, a click event for an example. We can we can listen for a click event on an element, 
but not actually bind the event onto the, that element itself. Um, that's essentially bubbling. Let me know if that kind of makes sense, but it essentially is a fundamental kind of concept. Bubbling is kind of something that JavaScript does. Let's now dig into why we're here, right? How we can use bubbling, how we can leverage bubbling to um, build cleaner websites, okay? Cleaner code on our websites as well. So what I've got on this page is some radio fields. You can see the click event is kind of picking them up here. The problem is, and more specifically actually, if you're using raw JavaScript, because jQuery does a lot for us, um, but we'll demonstrate it in just plain JavaScript first, and you can see why this um, why this is helpful. Because you might not have you you might not have access to jQuery. I try and avoid unless I have to with Webflow as an example. They give you jQuery. Here I'm using the Material um, Design thing, and they give me jQuery, so I might as well use it. But I'm not going to bring it into a website that doesn't need it. It's 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 really handy, but there's just so much that it gives you that you don't really need. So we'll demonstrate it in uh, raw JavaScript. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, let's write out this, the kind of typical way you might might do this, um, which I see a lot of, uh, which is kind of like a no that we can use, then use bubbling to, to help us out. So let's find our radios, okay? And document.query, um, selector all and we're going to go input with type uh, radio now this isn't great code because we want to make sure we'd want to find the kind of form first and then within the form find the radios to be a bit more specific because especially if we have multiple radio buttons all over the over the page so it's not great code but for argument's sake this is kind of how we would kind of typically typically do it now because this is a node list, we can't bind click events to this node list or whatever. So what, what you'd typically do is go array dot from create make this into an array and then you'd go um, radios dot for each uh, radio index and then you go radio dot add event listener um, add event listener click what we've got right now I have bound a click element uh, click event to each of these radio buttons so when I click on these you get that event so back to this this is this this is the way that I see um, events being handled in forms is having these kind of getting all of the elements and looping through them and then binding a click event okay and this this kind of works i mean you saw there that um you know i could click that and whatever and i mean let's go target dot value you know you get access to these values jQuery makes it super easy to do this. You might do it in jQuery by going, uh, let's do this, this, this. We can get rid of that, and get rid of that, and we can go radios dot on click, okay? And you can see that jQuery takes all takes care of all that for us but once again you might not be using jQuery jQuery is great but it's it's bulky so given this and giving our knowledge of bubbling what do you think we can do here instead of getting each of our radios and binding a click event what do you think we can do here knowing that we have bubbling on our side Looking at our DOM tree here, and by the way, if you haven't used Pine Groats, it's very similar to very similar to Webflow in that it's kind of a no-code editor, but you can you do it all on your local machine and then you host it yourself. Whereas obviously Webflow takes care of the hosting and, and all the rest of it. I think this is a lot more powerful. I mean it is a lot more powerful than Webflow, but um, a lot of people enjoy Webflow because it kind of takes care of a lot of other things for you. But 
Anyway, I digress. The event does not go down. That span does not receive this event. Mainly because we're not listening for it, but we won't confuse things. We won't receive the event on the span. It bubbles up. You can you can listen for that event on the label. You can listen for that event on this div. You can listen for that event on the field set. And you notice I skipped these here because they're siblings. They're not they're not high up. So that event will be captured by all these, and it will bubble up until it gets to the probably the document. I think you can listen to it on the document or the body. I forget which one. So we've got all our inputs. They're all encapsulated in this field set. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bind a an event onto dot um, query selector, um, and I'm going to find the field set. they might not click on an element to change it right so what we want to do is say on the change event run this function <clears throat> and then let's console log the e e dot target actually let's do e so that event is being even though we bound it to the field set this event is firing and what we have here is that we have the current target and we have the actual target that's actually producing the event, the change event. So we have access to that. Go in there, target dot value. And this is all on the field set. This isn't actually on the event itself. You remember the code we wrote before, which was, and then the function, you know, from that to just one line of code and no matter what happens here we might change the layout we might do a bunch of things we might actually um, the, the contents of this field set might change over time and we've wrote, wrote one line of code here that actually takes care of all of that for us uh, what can we do we can insert uh, element layout div after it and inside of that we're going to put a paragraph and we're going to say this is some secret text to let you know something okay and I'm going to hide this I've done this recently. When you select one um, radio button, so it's a contact form, when, it, when you select one option on the radio button for a specific type of contact, so one of them is to contact me, the other one is to make a suggestion. If they select make a suggestion, I present another set of radio buttons. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have a little bit of text here. So if we go display none, let's give it an ID, show me. If um, if this equals option three, then comment dot uh, get Five minutes later. Oh, I need to scroll down. <laughs> okay, so we're hiding and showing that. What we've just learned there is binding an event higher up without having to loop through every single element and bind an event to each element. In this specific case, it's, ra it's radio. I think this is this can be really, really powerful, and I think that it's it can stop a lot of kind of... Um, just messy code, I guess, and making sure that we're uh, understanding what's happening, you know, using bubbling to 
simplify our code, using that to our advantage can be really, really beneficial. I mean, I hope that was helpful. That's kind of all I wanted to go over today. And I hope this kind of gave you a little brief look at PineGrow. I mean, we didn't really look at it too much, to be fair. We just stayed in the JavaScript. And I'm sure if you're using Webflow, you would also stay in the, uh, the JavaScript. Um, so this should be easily portable. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will look to do some more form stuff going forward as well because it seems like that's a, that's a pretty, um, people enjoy that subject on my channel. So thanks for sticking around and until next time, I'll, uh, I'll see you later.